hello there everybody and welcome in this tutorial i'm going to show you how to make this kind of system where you can choose your sprites in the lobby for example i can choose my sprite to this guy choose this one differently and if i join game you're going to see it's going to instance it with that sprite if i join game on this side you're going to see he has his own sprite this other guy i can choose a completely different sprite and join the game as you can see all of them have their sprites instance really nicely all of them can interact with each other as usual and they can kill each other respawn and everything will still be working so with all that said, I'll see you in the tutorial. So getting started, you can see I have some edits that I made to my lobby. So as you can see, we have something like a sprite controller and we have a sprite previous and next buttons. So in the script here, what exactly this does is it allows our buttons to be able to switch through some sprites and what helps us do that is the frames here on the sprite. So if we go back to the sprite and go over to region, I just selected the texture region there that contains, I think this first um, six characters, just like this. So if you want to go exactly the way I'm going, just use these first six characters. So with that aside, we have our frames and if we increase these frames, you can see that it starts changing. And that is what we're going to be using to flip through the sprite. So if I run this now, you're going to see we have something basic like this that can go next, next, next. And it finishes, you can go previous and it finishes. I haven't added any functionality of this to join the game. So I'll be doing all that in this tutorial. And if you may be wondering how to create this kind of interface or write some basic scripts like this, I recommend you check out the first link in the description. There I have a course that is going to teach you everything you completely know as a beginner in Godot. Or if you're just looking to sharpen your skills, that course would be a really good option. So the workflow we're going with here is, as you can see, we have a client and a server. So first of all, the client is going to make the connection to the server. And also know that other clients are also connected to the server. Then it's going to wait. It's not just going to instance the player in all other clients when it just gets the connection, because that's actually what we're doing now. But in this case, we're going to wait and the client is going to send a sprite. So yes, I know you may be saying we can't send a whole new picture just because we want to connect to the server. No, we are not. What we're going to do is all of these other clients are also going to have that picture or that sprite, whatever. And we're just going to be sending the details in our case, remember it was the frame. We're going to just send the frame number and all these other guys are going to be able to decode that information because they have the, exactly the same sprite. So this is actually very common in games like PUBG or COD or, or the rest of them. Most of the time you realize that we have to download maps because before we can play some kind of games. And that's because they don't want their servers to be sending all that information to you. You're going to have it in your system. So all you need to do is say, go to a map of so so and so ID or something like that. I think hopefully you get the point. So after the client, sorry, after the server receives the sprite, then it's going to broadcast it to all the nodes. So this is just a very short presentation of what exactly we're going to do here so that you can know the workflow we're going with. So right now, the first thing I want to do is I want to go back to my player, player.csn and other player.csn. And we're going to be editing some things here. Over here, we already have a sprite, but that sprite doesn't have all that region set and all that stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here to the root node and I'm going to right click, go to merge from scene. And we're going to merge from the, I think, lobby scene, yes. So that sprite that is, in, that is under the sprite controller, I'm just going to merge it there. So I'm going to reset the position to 0, 0. So go to transform, reset the position, and also scale it down a bit. So since it's looking nice and it's fitting our sprite there, I'm just going to delete the first sprite we had and rename this to sprite, okay? So I'm going to save that, go to other player, and also I'm going to delete the sprite here and just merge the one from the player scene. So go over here, merge from scene, and we'll go to the player scene, and we're going to merge that sprite. So it looks like nothing happened, but if you go over here to, I think, animation, you'll be able to um, get some other frames instead. So yes, that aside, the next thing we want to do is go over here to the script, and here we're going to create a variable called frame. So var frame, and this is going to be equal to zero, or we can just set it to null right now. And we do func underscore ready. And on the ready function, we want to set, I think, sprite or frame to be equal to frame. So we're going to be setting this frame from this server.gd here. But for now, I just want you to put this in here. I'm just going to copy it, also put in other player.csn. And when we use it, you're actually going to see what I'm talking about. Also, one thing I want to do is in the lobby here, since the sprite controller is covering everything, if we try to tap, we're going to be tapping the controller. Um, that's the control node here instead of the actual buttons 
so i'm going to drag this and just put it under the button here the join button so that we can actually press it when we need to i think that should be it we go over to script and go over to server.gb okay so over here when we connect to the server we are hiding the lobby and printing connected to server yes so the next thing we want to do is we want to send our current sprites okay so to do that i'm just going to copy this line of code over here because this is getting the lobby node that's the lobby node over there so i'm going to do rpc underscore id and we're going to send it to the server that's one and this method that is going to handle this is going to be set underscore sprite and here we're going to pass in the frame so to do that i'm going to get the lobby node okay after getting the lobby node i'm going to get the sprite controller node and after that i'm going to just do dot current so yours might not be dot current if you go over here to um, the script that i made yeah i'm keeping track of everything with this variable here called current so basically current is going to be that particular frame whenever i finish choosing the sprite that i want here so hopefully you get the point if your own is not like my own and you're, that, and you're not using animation or region and all that stuff and your own is like separate sprites what i recommend you do is you should have something like this like a dictionary that kind of thing and you're going to map each number to a particular sprite name definitely this must not be exact the exact sprite name and i can do like assets slash for example this is where your own um, assets are being stored or something like that but you get the point just map each of them to a particular name and this method is actually going to recommend a particular level of expertise or shall i say of knowledge while using godot but this would be the best way in my opinion so that you can track those numbers over here with like the current frame and whenever you need it you just use it so we go back here i think we should be good so now it's time to go over to the server and set this function up so i'm here in the server i go over to the script and yes immediately we connect right now we are going to instance the player for everybody but that's not what we want so i'm going to create a remote function and the name is going to be set sprites and it's also going to take in a frame so yes it says the id is not found so we're going to make a variable there id and this is going to be equal to get underscore tree dot rpc sender underscore sender id and this is just basically going to get the id of the person that sends this particular message to the server if you don't understand what i just said i recommend you start watching this series from the beginning definitely it will be a lot of help to you so after getting the id the next thing we want to do is we just want to send that frame to all the clients so that i can instance that player with that particular sprite so we go over here and back to over here where we have instance player you can see we have player instance because of this so this is where we're actually instancing the player so i'm going to go over here to my global script and here i'm going to put a comma and do frame equals to zero so i'm doing this because i want frame the frame option to be optional because it's only for the players that we're going to be needing this frame so what we're going to do is here yeah, after we set the location we want to do if node underscore instance dot is underscore in underscore group and here we have players because if we go over here to our other players you can see all of them are in the same group players and yeah my player too is in that group player so if you go over here i think global.gd we're going to check if the node that we're trying to instance is inside that group then all we need to do is say node underscore instance dot free equal to frame hopefully now you get the point why we went to our player to set that frame so when we set the frame on the ready function it's going to just set the sprite frame to that frame so before you run it now you go over to your server.gd script scroll down to where we're instancing the player actually and here we are going to pass in that frame okay so we set up the frame here in the global.gd to work really nicely so we go over here and set oh sorry we didn't even set it here so we do frame okay because we're getting that from the instance player now and we set it here also down here we do frame okay so i think this should be good we'll actually run into a problem but i just want to show you what we've done ever since so as you can see i have three instances right now so i can choose a sprite on this one and just join the game you can see that that sprite was instanced really nicely but if i choose another sprite with this guy you're going to see that over here in his own client he has the same sprite with this guy and if i also go over here and change the sprites on this guy you're going to see this guy has three of them to be the same sprite this guy has two of them to be the same sprite and this client here is the only guy that has has everything right so essentially what is the problem the problem is this client was already in the game ever since so anybody that is coming now is going to give him their frames okay but this guy he this client over here he doesn't know 
anybody that was here before him so anybody that was in the game before him he doesn't know what their frames look like so all he does is just gives them his own particular frame. also this client over here that is his problem so what we're going to do now i'm just going to close all these out we're going to use the server to keep track of everybody that has joined so what we're going to do here is we'll make a variable this is the server um, server.csn and here we're going to make a variable and here we can just say player underscore sprites and this is going to be a dictionary definitely this will not scale really well but i just want to give you a simple overview so you can work on it later so over here when we are setting the sprite we want to do players um yeah i think it's player sprite and here we'll do str id that's saving the id in the dictionary and we're going to set that to be equal to frame i think that should be good instead of passing just frame here we're going to pass in player underscore sprites so now anytime somebody wants to set their sprites it's going to get every other person's sprites um that is already on the network and yes we're going to work on this now so we we'll go to the client and on the server.gd then here instead of passing frame we're going to do player underscore sprites and in square brackets we're going to do str id so that is going to get the cur that current player's um, frame remember all of this was stored in the server so it just comes and select the particular id for that person i guess so down here we're going to do the same thing i'll we'll just copy this player sprite here and put it in here because this is a recursive function and he calls himself again and again and again until it's done so hopefully i think that is all we have an error say okay i is not defined sorry i thought i typed id so yeah i think that should be good now if i run this and i'm going to just run uh, more instances of it and i'll see you when i'm done so we're here and i currently have three instances open so i'm going to change this to something like this guy change this one to the zombie and change this one to the last person so we can distinguish so as you can see all of them are being instanced really nicely all of them um, work and even if we kill somebody the person will respond with the same sprite so everything really works quite nicely and i like this but as i said it's not really scalable to have recording everybody that has been um, connected to the server and all. but you basically get the simple overview i was trying to go so with all that said i really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and learned something helpful thanks for watching see you guys next time smash subscribe if you're not already subscribed and goodbye